Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. I decided to do this intro at night because, well, the kids are finally in bed and I get some peace and quiet. Today we're going to do the July garden tour. I also figure since this is my fourth YouTube video now, I should get in front of the camera and introduce myself. My name is Ryan and this is my Niagara garden. All right, July 28th, let's see what's happening in the garden. Over here we got the kids' garden boxes. This is Grayson's. The peas have come to an end. They're pretty much done. The carrots are really coming up and the broccoli are finally starting to push through. We had nothing come up from the green beans, so we're gonna have to replant there. And over in Thea's garden box, we got the carrots pushing up. The black peppers are doing great. The royal burgundy beans are coming in as well. And finally, the cucumber started growing. And of course, we have our tidy trees tomato, which is getting bigger and producing more tiny fruits. Over here, we have what's left of Bodie's little garden. He's kind of torn it apart a little bit, but you know, he's two. The tidy trees tomato still managing to pull through with a few more tomatoes. All right, into the big garden we go. The eggplants here on the left are doing great. Check it out. Got some huge fruit on there. Those are your standard black beauty uh, eggplants. And then in here, we've got the Listada di Gandia. These are seeds I got from my cousin, Jen Edwards, and I had three seeds. Two of them died. So that was the last seed and it produced this great plant. So I'm really happy about being able to give some seeds back to my cousin. Here we have all the peppers. We've got the golden peppers, the red peppers, and the black shepherd peppers. Intermixed there, we have some parsley and some oregano down there. But here you can see some really good production as well. That's a huge shepherd pepper and lots of big bells coming in here. These are going to end up being red. That one is going to be a golden. This is what's left of the strawberry patch. It's an ever-bearing strawberry patch, but I think I'm gonna take it out and uh, do a second uh, sowing of beets there for the rest of the season and then have a new strawberry idea for next season. This is the green food tunnel. It's almost fully to the top and we've got four diva cucumbers in here. We've got cucumelons going up the sides. We've got nasturtiums overflowing on the bottom on both sides and we have run into a problem. I didn't fight off the cucumber beetles well enough and it looks like we're gonna lose one, maybe even two of the major vines here to the bacterial wilt. Now, I did get a bunch of cucumbers off of it, probably harvested about 15 to 20, but ultimately I lost them to the cucumber beetles. Here we have the overflow section for tomatoes. Uh, that's the chocolate cherry. Those are doing great. Chocolate cherry. And here we have the sun sugar tomatoes. These are black cherry tomatoes. And here we have the ground cherry. And it's been producing a lot. Nothing on the ground right now. I'm, my little harvesters must have been in here stealing ground cherries. Over here we have the blueberries. The blueberries are almost all picked away. But the kids are just waiting for these last ones to turn blue, I'm sure, and then they'll take those. This is the grapevine that goes all the way up and over and through and out the garden. Next year that will develop canes, which will give us the blue Trollhagen grapes. Here's our plum tree, recovering from its aggressive haircut. It's totally fine, very healthy. Sage and cilantro over here. Uh, one is bursting and the other one's pretty well done. Uh, over here we have the two pear trees, also recovering from the aggressive haircut, uh, and some zinnias down below that have finally decided to bloom. Over here we have the sweet 17, 17 different varieties of tomato in 18 square feet, and lots of stuff happening here. So many cool things. The cherry, Cherokee purple is coming in. Uh, that'll ripen lots of production there. Uh, they're getting big and heavy, so they're starting to need those plastic tomato hooks. Look at the size of the big yellow German. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you can see that, but it's bigger than my hand can hold. That's the Super Sweet 100. Those are sweet golds. These are the Indigo Rose. These are Sweeties. More Indigo Rose. These guys are Mortgage Lifters. These guys are supposed to be Tim's Black Ruffles, but 
I, they don't look black or ruffled and I don't know. A guy named Tim didn't give them to me, so <laughs> we'll see what happens there. I think they might have been mislabeled. Here's our Sicilian saucers coming in nice. And these are the solar flares. Oh, those are gonna be pretty. Uh, those are mortgage lifters, my favorite from last year. These are Bonnie Best. In here, we've got perfectly round, medium red, and they're starting to live up to their name. So many good things happening in the Sweet 17. It's been great. Lots of vines have reached the top of their strings. Nobody has been overcrowded. Everybody's flourishing. It's been fantastic. That is a Russian mammoth sunflower that is supposed to get big, but it's still only about three feet high. I'm not really sure what's happening there. Uh, the heat might be getting to it and the lack of water. Uh, those are Broadwinds or fava beans, which I thought would be bigger. Might be the same problem as the sunflower. Uh, these are the orca beans, which I planted 16 plants. I got three. So hopefully these guys uh, live. And here are the cantaloupe and honeydew melon on the semi-arched trellis. They're about halfway up the trellis now. They're doing okay. They're fighting off the cucumber beetles as well. So we'll see what happens there. These are the red Anasazi beans. They are climbing up the trellis and hopefully they'll start to produce as well. Here's my kale patch. Uh, it's doing super healthy. Every morning I come out and I snip off two or three leaves from my smoothies and it seems to produce way more than two or three leaves new per day. So it's outpacing my smoothie eating. So I might need to use it for something else. Here are the white currants. They produce tasty white currants down in here. If you can see them right there. I love the white currants. This brings us to our red seedless table grape named Vanessa. And it is growing like crazy. I don't know if you can see this, but the vines are just coming out of everywhere. They're gonna, they're gonna be splayed across the fence. Uh, the cordons will go across the fence and then the canes will come down, which will produce the grapes next year. It's a three year plan for the grapes and we're in year two. I'm really excited for grapes next year. That giant bush that you see over there that is out and overgrowing everything is our red raspberries. Uh, we just finished the summer bearing and I'm gonna have to pull out all of the canes that have just produced for me so that the canes that produce in September can have more room to see the sun. Ever bearing means that they bear once in July and once in September. So looking forward to the September harvest. Our direct from seed box over here has cut and come again lettuce and sure enough it's come again. I mowed this down before we left for camping about three weeks ago and it's back ready for salad greens. Here we have the second crop of radishes coming up. They're doing all right and then next to them are the first crop of carrots. They are gonna be tasty. They are quite ready to come out of the ground now. So we'll be doing a harvest quite soon so we can plant a second set of carrots for a fall harvest before the frost. Here are our broccolis. Previous harvests of broccoli have happened, which is fantastic. We've probably taken about 10 broccolis out of the garden already, and this will be another four. And then we'll replant for a fall harvest before the frost hits. Next, we have our hemrod green seedless table grape. It goes all the way up the four by four, splits off into two cordons, one down the left side, one down the right side, and it just keeps growing. It goes and goes and goes. This is fantastic cordon development. Next year, uh, we're going to fill in the middle with a grid where the canes will grow off of the sides of the cordons. Each leaf node this year corresponds to a cane next year, which will grow across and grow grapes that we'll be picking from above our heads. That's the three-year plan for our table grapes. All right, I think that's everything in here. Let's go to the back garden, shall we? Here's the bean trellis that we put around the sandbox and my little bean pickers, uh, they absolutely love it. They're picking all the beans as they come up. They came in with a handful of beans yesterday. I was so happy and proud. The asparagus over here are doing all right, I guess, for the first year. I planted these earlier this year. They were one-year-old uh, asparagus crowns and they're, they're super tall, but they're kind of wispy and floppy. Uh, so I assume that's what they're supposed to do. And next year, I'll let them uh, mature even more. And then the year after that, we'll get a, a healthy harvest. Here we are back at the side garden and our sunflower has finally bloomed. It's my first sunflower. That's so cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, we've got the Brussels sprouts, which are developing quite nicely. Here we have our zucchini. They're doing pretty good as well. Uh, 
this guy's kind of fallen over. Uh, I need to get him back up onto here so he's growing nice and vertical. The other one is growing quite nicely. Uh, we're almost two feet off the ground now with that one. Uh, it hasn't been producing very much. It keeps dropping female flowers because, well, the heat is just killing it right now, but we're getting through. Here's the Chinese pink celery, which is kind of neat. I'm not really sure when I'm supposed to uh, harvest these, but probably quite soon. More kale. We're at the last of our romaine. We keep harvesting from there. That's fantastic. And this is our winter squash cage. It has just blown up from four tiny little seed things that wouldn't do anything to invasive vines that are climbing all over tomatoes and all over each other. Uh, this is fantastic. On the right, we have spaghetti squash, and on the left, we have butternut squash. And right there, we've got our first baby. That is so cool. I can't wait to see how that turns out. Moving along, we have some overgrown cilantro right there. Gonna let that go to seed, see what happens. There's some coriander right there on the tips. Here we have the Tidy Treats tomato, just to show you kind of an example of what the Tidy Treats can do in the ground as opposed to in a box. Uh, the kids' garden boxes have these and they're not nearly as mature. Uh, but it goes all the way up the post and it's got tons and tons of growth and production on it, but the kids don't really have much yet. We've got some indigo rose here, some more indigo rose over there, some big guys back here. I don't even remember what they are. I'll have to check my database. And uh, some more over here. And in the corner, we've got corn, the corn that survived the, the big windstorm. Uh, we've got some cobs down here. I hand pollinated these guys by clipping off one of the male ends off the top and dusting it on top of the silks at the bottom. Each one of those silks corresponds to one kernel on the cob. Here's a bunch more romaine down there mixed in with some basil and some parsley. And that's the garden. I almost forgot to mention our Lemon Queen sunflowers. They're pushing six feet tall now and they're about to produce a big flower. I can't wait to see these guys greet the sun in the morning as we enter the garden. So that's the July 2020 garden tour. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe hit that subscribe button down below. So until next time, my name is Ryan and this is my Niagara garden. So that's the garden tour for July 2020. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, dude, dude, I'm talking here. So that's the garden tour for July 2020. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give it a, give it, the dog, the dog is coming. So that's the, the, so that's the July. Blah, blah, blah.